We do indeed have the most endangered predator, and not one, but several of them. And I'm still not sure which particular pack this is, but it's always an exciting sight. I'm so happy to finally see wild dogs. And they have just finishing off an impala kill that they have made. So there we go for our young viewer that asked about the wild dog and whether or not they are the equivalent of the wolf or whether they're very similar to the wolf. There you go. These are our African equivalents to wolves. And they live in packs and they behave in a way that's very, very similar to the wolf. They have an alpha breeding pair and the whole pack is so tightly bonded that they will all care for the little ones. They are gorgeous creatures. And for our new viewers, these are not feral dogs. These are not feral dogs, this is a completely separate species that has actually relatively, in terms of, of millions of years, relatively recently evolved. You can see they've obviously enjoyed their impala meal, faces covered with blood. It was an adult impala ram. You can see the horns there. And they're all gathered together and it's a bit of a feeding frenzy when wild dogs first kill because everybody crowds together and the prey disappears within a matter of seconds. Right, I wonder who we've got here. My money's on the sands pack, but we'll see whether or not we see any sign of a collar around one of the individuals, in which case it would be the investic pack of wild dogs. Those are the two large packs that we see regularly. And it's good that they've got this particular kill because somewhere in here will be one very pregnant alpha female. <laughs> White Lady Eowyn is asking about how Ferg feels about his first wild dog sighting here. There you go. White Lady Eowyn, you missed Ferg doing a little celebratory dance in the back, but you got his thumbs up. I think he's pretty chuffed. I know I'm pretty chuffed. I'm very glad, because Fergus has been asking me for wild dogs for a while now. I haven't been able to deliver. See those fluffy white tails. Each one, of course, with completely individual markings. Splodges of paint, if you will. I wonder if we can actually find the alpha female, because these dogs should be giving birth in the next two months or so. It is wild dog breeding season, so very shortly they will be denning. In which case, the entire pack is devoted to looking after the female and her new puppies. Uh, MJ, no, actually, these dogs are not closely enough related to other dog species to actually breed with them. So they would not breed with a domestic dog. If they met with a domestic dog, they'd actually kill it. Um, they're far enough removed. Look, I think if you created a really artificial situation, perhaps you might get into breeding, but I don't think so. I think their chromosome numbers are completely different. They're very, they're a completely separate genus. They're, yes, they're in the canid family, but they are a completely different genus to the jackals and to wolves and to domestic dogs as well, which are all part of the canis genus. So they are something completely different, and it's visible in physical differences as well. If you, for example, look at their front feet, they don't have a dew claw. They only have four toes. They don't have five toes in the way that your domestic dog does. So if any of you are sitting watching Safari Live with your dogs with you, grab their front paws if they'll let you, and have a look at the toe structure of the front foot. It's completely different in wild dogs. They're missing that fifth toe completely. It's been dramatically reduced. And that's something that's quite fortunate because we have a species called a wild cat which can breed with feral cats and that's one of the biggest threats. Ah, now Dr. Hyena is obviously a hyena fanatic and would like to know how many hyenas it would take to steal from this number of wild dogs. Sure, uh, I, I can't quite see exactly how many wild dogs we have here. I think we have quite a few, in which case I would say that it would take, it would take a large clan of hyenas to steal from them. Ten maybe? 
maybe a bit less. It depends on how desperate the hyenas are feeling because wild dogs and hyenas vie for the second spot in the predator hierarchy out here. And we've very frequently seen wild dogs chasing and nipping and attacking hyenas to the point once where one hyena tried to climb underneath Scott's car to try and get away from the wild dogs. So they will be aggressive in the face of a challenge by a hyena and the hyena ends up snapping and having to back into a thick bush to try and get away and present the wild dogs with its, its business end, so to speak, the bit with the teeth. Now they do regularly come into contact with each other, but it would take a brave hyena to take on a pack this size. Lions, on the other hand, would not think twice, and they absolutely would come in and kill the wild dogs, and there's no way the wild dogs would be able to challenge them. They'd have to run away. I can hear a little bit of yipping. I actually want to reposition. I want to take us round to the other side because the wild dogs are tugging. Oh wait, hold on, never mind. They're all coming back this way. All right, we're not going anywhere. They're all coming this side. Now, little one Naira, talking about the fluffy white tails, yes, it does serve a purpose, especially when they're hunting together cooperatively as a pack. That white can serve as a beacon because white shows up very, very clearly out here, just in the same way that the lions have black on the tips of their tails and on the backs of their ears. That's a way of highlighting fundamental features for the wild dogs that scatter and race off in different directions. Being able to follow a white beacon tail is a very useful thing. It's a very useful way of, or useful sign. There was one wild dog puppy two years ago, I think now, and I can't remember. I think it belonged to the Sands pack that was actually born with a black tail. Completely black, fluffy tail, which is very unusual. Unfortunately, if I remember correctly, that, that dog didn't make it. It was killed by lions, I believe. But white is always a, white and black are always fundamental colors out here. Very useful. And of course, there's also the fact that wild dog tails are a very fundamental part of the way that they express their mood and they communicate with each other. An animal's tail is always like that. It's fundamental to the way that they communicate. You know that, those of you with dogs or cats, you know when your dog's tail is between its legs or if it's wagging, it helps you to determine what mood your dog is in. And so it's another way of highlighting a very important visual communication tool. This is awesome. And they're still, and we don't have to race around, we can actually sit and watch them. Stephen, we often get asked this question, and Stephen would like to know if the, if the predators are more tolerant of certain guides than they are of others. I don't think there is a massive difference, no. Um, I certainly think that your tone plays a role in the way that cre all of the animals respond, especially elephants, not just predators. And obviously, you speak in a low tone, you speak in a calming tone, you don't go shouting around next to them. That's just basic manners, really. But I don't think that they respond differently to different guides out here. You could get a situation where a, one particular guide spends an inordinate, an inordinate amount of time with a certain animal, and perhaps that animal might learn that particular guide, or learn about that particular guide. One thing I can tell you is that animals respond if they are not treated well. They respond differently to different sounds of vehicles. Luckily for us, all of these animals are treated ethically, so they don't treat us any different. Right, speaking of predators and their reaction to the vehicle, let's see how the lions are feeling this morning. <laughs> 